One last thing we want to look at before we get to our DC analysis is the finite output resistance of our MOSFET transistor. So previously we had said that our ID is independent of VDS in the saturation region. And so of course remember our saturation region is when VDS is greater than our VDS sat if we're talking about an NMOS device. And so it turns out that this isn't quite true. So this statement up here is not 100% true. And so let's take a look at our IV curves first to sort of get an understanding of what we were talking about, sort of remind ourselves. So we had our ID versus our VDS. And so remember we said we had some family of IV curves. And so it looks something like this. So as we have different gate voltages, so let me see if I can draw that a little bit better. So as we have different gate voltages, we get different curves corresponding to different amounts of drain currents. So we have something that looks like this. And so in general, this region towards the right, we said was our saturation region. So over here, we said this is our saturation region. And when we drew this before, our curves were horizontal in saturation region, as I've shown here again. And it turns out uh, that this is not completely true. And what we're gonna see is that these curves actually have some non-zero slope. So if we were to draw this more accurately, our curves would look something like this. And so of course this is a little exaggerated, but they would have some slope in our saturation region. And so we'll see an updated diagram here in a little bit. Uh, the reason for this is due to an effect called channel length modulation. And so let's sort of step through what's going on and why that is going to change the relationship between our drain current and our drain to source voltage when we're in saturation. So channel length modulation. So remember we had said as that drain to source voltage is increasing, we're having some, we have some pinch off point in the channel, which is where our drain voltage has sort of counteracted that effect of our gate voltage. And so we don't quite have enough voltage, effective voltage at our gate to create the inversion layer. So instead we, we have sort of our channel coming to this point. So instead of having a nice uniform channel like this, where this is our channel with our source over here and our drain over here. Remember we said if we apply that drain voltage, it becomes something that looks like this. And if we have that point, we say we have sort of a pinch off point. So as that's increasing, uh, that pinch off point right here is actually going to be moving this way. So as VDS increases, our pinch off point is moving towards the source. And so as that's moving towards the source, of course, our channel length is going to get smaller. And so by channel length, I'm saying uh, the actual space that our electrons are going to be moving through. So remember, they, of course, are still going to have to translate. So let's say we have something like this, so it's reduced a little bit further. So they're still going to have to go through this region here if this is our drain and this is our source. However, we have that electric field which is going to sweep them across this region. So because our pinch off point is moving, this effective channel length here is going to be decreasing. So our channel is shorter. And so if we have a shorter channel, that means we're going to have less resistance and if we have less resistance for a given voltage, that means we can have more current. So what we're gonna see is that, again, as we sort of anticipated with these non-horizontal lines, if we move this way in our VDS, we're gonna have some corresponding increase in our drain current while we're in the saturation region. So let's go ahead and write an updated equation. So our ID, we had said previously, was equal to our conduction parameter Kn, times VGS, so the quantity actually, of VGS minus VTN squared. So of course that is for our NMOS device. And so we're gonna update, update that equation by multiplying this by a factor of one plus lambda VDS. So this is going to be our updated equation for ID. And again, this is in the saturation region so it's not if we're in our non-saturation or our triad region, this is just for saturation. And this is only when we're considering some finite output resistance. 
If we're told the, the output resistance is infinite, then we don't need to worry about that extra term. And so let's define what this lambda is. So this lambda is equal to one over VA. And so the VA, as we'll see in a graph here, or not a graph, but a, uh, an IV curve is the same basic idea as our early voltage. And the lambda is called our channel length modulation parameter. So channel length modulation parameter. Okay, so let's take a look now at our updated IV curves. So we can see we now have some slope in this saturation region. So again, over here is where we're in saturation for our VDS greater than some VDS sat. And so we can see if we extrapolate those slopes from each individual curves back to an, a VDS axis intercept, they're all going to intercept at the same point here. And so this voltage we're gonna call negative VA. And so as we stated above, one over VA is equal to lambda. So this is going to be equal to negative one over lambda. And so we're not gonna go through the, the derivation of this, but what we would see is that the slope of these lines, so our slope here, is going to be equal to one over R naught, where this R naught is going to be the small signal output resistance of the transistor. So let's go ahead and write an equation for that because that's going to be important as we get to our AC analysis and we have our small signal equivalent circuit for our MOSFET. So our R naught is going to be one over lambda times IDQ, which is also equal to VA over IDQ based on the relationship we had above between our lambda and our VA. So again, this is going to be an important small signal uh, parameter when we do our AC analysis of the MOSFET. And again, it's the output resistance of our transistor small signal output resistance.